Hello and welcome to MoFo RC's A Tale of Two Wagons. <clears throat> the wagon on the left, or possibly the right, depending on how this turns out when we're done editing, the green wagon. This is a stock Axial SCX24 power wagon. There has been nothing done to this at all in any amount. The wagon on the right, or left, the orange wagon. This is mostly stock. The only thing that has been changed is the axles with the new Mofo RC X15s. These are actually the nylon version. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up. My lighting kind of sucks, but there they are. This is the rear axle. This is the front one. And you can see a black label DPM servo right here, which is a uh, direct power, plugs right in to this balance connector port here. Plug this into there and done. No external BEC needed to get maximum power out of that servo. So what we're doing today, we're just gonna talk a little bit about the new axles, uh, what's changed from version one to version two, and then we're gonna do a little comparison side by side with the green one with the stock axles and the orange one with the X15s, you can see the 15 millimeter width difference right off the bat. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Let's see if we can zoom in a little here. Let's see here. There we go. Kind of sort of you can see it probably there and kind of sort of you can see that skinny little thing there. So <clears throat> what I'm going to go do is grab some of these axles off the shelf because I forgot to and I think if I'm correct, you might be able to hear me the whole time I'm walking over here because I'm wearing a wireless microphone, but I don't know if I set the microphone up right. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to grab some aluminum billet ones and some nylons. This is also the first video I've ever done uh, testing out mixing clips together. Um, so if this is completely garbage and terrible, we will work on that. Okay, so we'll just grab the rear axle out of each of these. Here is the aluminum billet version here. Aluminum billet version axle here. You can see the built-in link riser on there. Drop out of the front to change out the gears and everything. Here's the nylon one. These are molded nylon. So they're nice, smooth, slippery plastic. Here's what your front axle would look like. This is the nylon one. This does come with uh, aluminum steering links already. And both sets will also come with the aluminum steering mount, steering servo mount. And this does uh, pretty much everything that a BSME, the best servo mount ever from Mofo RC, would do. And uh, just bolts right on top to these two holes here. Here's the aluminum one with aluminum links. Uh, you can see some of the steering angle in there. <clears throat> so a few changes we're just going to talk about and try to make this a pretty quick video. Um, as you can probably tell, the aluminum ones do not have the tiger stripes anymore down the sides here. That was like a first run only version one. Uh, maybe we'll do a, another version later with the tiger stripes. I don't know, but they no longer have those. One other thing that has changed that, uh, popular demand, I suppose you call it is we got rid of the, uh, what are they called? The little steering bushings that go inside here that fall out and you lose. So now these are actually a, um, oh, what the heck is that thing called? A shoulder screw. These are now shoulder screws with no little bushings to fall out or lose. These are shoulder screws in here, shoulder screws in here as well. Both of them have shoulder screws. Uh, one other notable change, you'll see the hardware pack is only that big. Uh, before we had to send out a whole bag of link balls that were 1.6 millimeter and you were required to change out all your link balls and shock balls when installing these to a larger diameter, which deemed to be not necessary. So we went to just 1.4 uh, to make things a whole lot easier for everybody. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Also, 
One kind of big change that hopefully you guys like, uh, I like the idea of it, some may not. These currently have, uh, be, the previous version came with a standard pitch gear in it. Uh, just a brass gear, it wasn't anything special. Standard pitch brass gear, they're nice and smooth, don't require a break-in period like some hard steel gears will, which most people are gonna change anyways. So what we decided to do inside here now is a 50% underdrive gear, both in the front and the rear axle. And uh, what's that's gonna do? Mostly, if you have a rig that's lacking power, this is gonna give you a lot more torque and a better low speed resolution. However, the real reason we did this is for tunability because we know most people are gonna change the gears out anyways. So we throw in the 50% reduction gear in here. And uh, later on in the video, you will see what the difference is when you can uh, basically just change out this front one to a stock gear that you already have, hopefully probably laying around somewhere. You probably already have a stock gear laying around somewhere in an axle. All you have to do is pull the two gears out while you're disassembling these and greasing them up, put the stock gears in the front one, and then you have a 50% underdrive to the rear, which gives you an even tighter circle. And we will show that a little bit later on in the video. Hopefully you guys like that idea, I don't know. Um, if not, I'm sorry. And uh, there's not much I can do about it now. So, hopefully you like that idea. Uh, I don't think anything else has really changed. We also do include the larger size, well, the nylon lock nut wheel nuts in here, which you will need a five millimeter um, tool to install. So you get the five millimeter nuts or you get the four millimeter nuts which are useful when you're using different wheels for an STX24 because the axle shaft diameters are larger than a STX24 axle shaft diameter is on the threads as well. Um, so you got two different options there. For any other useful information, I would just say hit up the website. Uh, there's a very, 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 very lengthy description on there. Make sure to read that thoroughly and uh, Let's see, I can't think of anything else. So without further ado, let's go to the test. This will be the stock SCX24. This is the Power Wagon model. We are going to get a steering circumference, whatever test here. That is from straight to straight. We'll just put a mark over here on the floor. Okay, next up is the X15 axles in a stock power wagon other than X15 axles and uh, this is the DPM servo. And we'll put a mark on the floor for that one. Okay, and now this is where they both ended up. The Gladiator over here on the left is just where they started at. That is sitting at the starting line. The orange one here is with the X15 axles. The green one is all stock in that direction. Now we will try one more test with this. All right, so this final test, as we spoke about, uh, <clears throat> the X15s are now shipped with 50% underdrive gear ratios in them. I figure if we're going to be sending them out with just brass gears anyways, we may at least, well, at least make them interesting, give you a little bit more power and some more options when tuning if you don't want to spend any money. So 50% underdrive front and rear in both axles. And what we went ahead and did now is I just swapped out the front gears in this one to a set of stock front gears out of a stock axle. Let's see if we can pick up even more steering just by doing that. Look at that, almost a whole car length in extra steering <clears throat> just by swapping out the front gears.
Now, the really interesting thing would be if this was the four wheel steer rig. This, however, is a long wheelbase, same as the Gladiator uh, rig. So if this was in like a deadbolt or a C10, uh, you know, the steering is gonna be even greater on the, on the range here. But we're talking, I'm not gonna give it an exact number. It's at least, oh gosh, at least 50, maybe more than that. And this is the, uh, the Black Label DPM servo in this one, which is direct power. You can see I've got it plugged into the balance port right here. So that is it for the steering test. If you're wondering what that looks like, that would be the approximation of what that steering circle would look like right there from start to finish. Now, I don't know exactly what, if this would be considered an actual measurement or not, but let's just see what the distance is from where the front wheel would, be have, would have started to where it would have ended. So we are looking at about I'm going to say about 14 inches running a stock pitch in the front and the included underdrives in the rear. For this one here, this is just the X15. You're looking at about 18 inches. And for the stock, SCX24 as it sits, and these are the uh, power wagons, you were looking at about 33, 32 and a half, 33. Thank you all so much for joining us. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, don't forget to like, subscribe, wherever those little buttons are at. Click them if you have not yet. Uh, for more updates, things like that, we're going to be doing more videos than we used to be doing, but probably more like the beginning of MoFORC, where we're doing actual videos, not just live videos. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this little test we just did. I'm still trying to figure out the whole camera, microphone, all this stuff. It's confusing to me. I am an old SOB. Bear with me while I figure it out. We will figure it out. And thank you so much.